Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and in today's video I'm going to do something a little different just for fun by exploring an older piece of equipment that was given to me by a friend, a Ruckus Zoneflex 7372 access point. All right guys, so like I said, we're going to have a little fun in this video. We're going to ex try to explore this Ruckus 7372 access point. I don't know anything about this product. In my job, we use nothing but Cisco access points. And now in my retirement, you guys are fully aware that I've become a huge fan of the Ubiquiti products. So we're going to try to get this thing uh, up and running and see what we can do with it. I don't even know if it works. It was given to me by a friend. It might not even power up, but we're going to find out together. I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. If we can get into the interface, great. We'll explore it. Um, not going to promise anything at this point other than a little exploration. So we're going to find out if this Ruckus Zoneflex 7372 access point is actually a functioning unit. Like I said, it was given to me by a friend. I have no idea if it'll even power up, but we're going to give that a shot now together. So the back of the unit says that the default IP address is 192.168.0.1. So the first thing I have to do is get my computer onto that same network. So I'm going to have to give my computer an address of 192.168.0.2 or 0.3, as long as it's on that same subnet. I don't know if you can see it. In the back of the unit, there are two Ethernet ports. One is a gigabit Ethernet port with PoE Plus, and one is a 10100 port. Now, I'm glad this unit has PoE Plus because the friend that gave it to me did not give me anything else but this device. I don't have a power adapter or anything else. So I'm going to try to power this up with the PoE injector and then hopefully we can launch a browser, go to 192.168.0.1 and see um, what happens from that point. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Let me get my computer switched over and get all the cables connected and uh, we'll start exploration. All right. So I have my computer set to 192.168.0.3. I have the computer plug directly into the uh, 10100 port like I had mentioned. And now I'm going to plug this. Sorry, it's a short cable. I'm going to plug this PoE injector into the 10100 1000 PoE plus port. And hopefully we'll see if this unit powers up. So here we go. Oh, and there's a series of lights on the front. I hope you guys can see that. It actually looks like it is powering up. We're going to attempt to uh, access the user interface uh, via a browser. So I have Chrome up and let's input the IP address. So 192.168.0.1. Your connection is not private, so that's a good sign. So let's go to advanced and proceed to 0 0.1. And there you go. Look at that. The ruckus user interface. Okay. So the back of the unit says, I didn't know that we were going to get this far. So let's see what the um, username and password is. So the username is super and the password is SP admin. So hopefully it's the default username and password and not, and it hasn't been changed. So we'll find out. SP admin. There we go. Okay, so we're in. So let's take a look. Let me see if I can um, make the screen a little bit bigger for you. So under status, it's giving us the device information. We have the device name, Ruckus AP. Here's the Mac address, the serial number, the software version, and the actual uptime. Okay. Current date and time is, isn't correct, but, but that's okay for the purposes of this video. All right. So let's look at the internet. It says connection status. We got a green check mark, although we're really not connected to the internet, um, at this point, because I'm just plugged directly into the device and the device isn't plugged into my network at this point, because my network is on a different subnet other than 0.1. So we're going to hopefully maybe see if we can change the connection type to a static IP so I can set it. I'm hoping maybe I can set this on my network and then um, actually get it to broadcast 
the SSID. Maybe we can connect to it with my iPhone and, and do some speed tests. Now, I know the unit is uh, just an ABGN unit. It's not an AC unit, but um, I'd be curious to see if we can get it connected and we can get connected to it. So, okay, so local subnets, not really quite sure what all this is. Like I said, guys, I am not familiar with the Ruckus units at all. So you're seeing, I'm seeing this for the first time with you. So it's got a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz radio. So it's dual band and it's got ethernet ports and there's LAN one, which is the uh, gigabit ethernet PoE and LAN two, which is the 10 100, which I'm currently connected uh, with to my computer. All right, so um, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the, uh, device so we can change the name if we want i'm just going to leave it as ruckus ap and there's the username and we could obviously change the password i'm just going to leave everything set to the default uh let's click on internet and here we go so uh connection type dhcp we can obviously change it to a static ip uh, but before i do that let's toggle down because i don't want to lose my connection Let's toggle down through some of the other um, options. Let's go to the 2.4 radio. And we can see that it looks like that on the 2.4 band, we can have up to eight wireless SSIDs. And I'm assuming that's going to be the same on the five. Let's take a look. Yeah, so we can have, then there it goes wireless nine uh, through wireless 16. So. On this unit, you can have up, up to 16 SSIDs, eight on the 2.4 and eight on the five gigahertz. So uh, that's pretty cool. Let's, let's go into the 2.4 and let's check out the first SSID. So the wireless network is called Wireless One. Uh, it's broadcasting the SSID, but I don't see Wireless One in my list of broadcast SSIDs here. So I'm assuming that we have to enable wireless availability in order for the SSID to uh, broadcast and show up. So let's just enable uh, the SSI, let's enable the wireless one um, network and say update changes. Since your parameters were saved. Okay, so let's take a look now at the uh, wireless networks in the area. And, and there you go, guys, at the bottom, there's a uh, wireless one SSID showing up and it appears to be unlocked, which is good for the purposes of this video. All right, so you can set access control. Uh, looks like it's got hot pot, uh, hotspot service. It supports VLANs apparently. Um, it, it supports DHCP option 82, client fingerprinting. And like I said, there are eight of them on the 2.4 band. So um, it's very, very interesting. Again, I'm seeing this for the first time. So, all right. So I would imagine it's going to be the same in the 5G range. Um, I'm thinking they're all disabled because none of them are showing up here other than the one that I just enabled. So let's take a look at wireless nine in the 5G band. And yeah, so there's the SSID wireless nine and wireless availability is uh, disabled. So we'll just leave it for that for testing purposes. Just having the 2.4 uh, band is just fine. Um, Ethernet ports. Again, we, we covered, we looked at that briefly before. Hotspot. Hotspot service currently is disabled. I'm not going to enable. I'm not, I don't want to get that deep into. Um, I just was hoping to successfully power it up and see if I can get into the interface. So to get this far already, um, I'm thrilled. Looks like it supports radius, uh, radius servers. Um, excellent. Um, I'm sure it's a few years old, so I'm sure there's an upgrade out there. But again, we're not connected to the internet to the internet at this point. And uh, let's see under management. Okay, so let's see. We got Telnet access, which is disabled. SSH access, which is uh, port 22 enabled. Um, 
HTTP access on port 80 is disabled, but HTTPS on port 443 is uh, port 443 is enabled. So, all right. So uh, let me go back now and go to the configuration of the internet and let's change this to a static IP. Let me give it a static IP on my net on my 192.168.100 subnet and see if um, I can then plug it into my switch and get it connected and so that we can connect to it with a mobile device and see if we could do a speed test. At least if we get that far, um, then the purpose of this video has been a success as far as I'm concerned. So let me give it a 100 dot and just to play it safe, I'm going to give it a 100.20 address. We're going to change the gateway to 100.1. And we are going to say updates, update settings. All right, so the update to the IP address was successful. And now this ruckus 7372 is on my 192.168.100 network. Um, Basically before when I was flipping through here and we were talking about local subnets and I was like, I don't know what this is. Again, I've never seen these devices before, but basically they, when I found out what I discovered was that when you enable the subnets, you basically get to uh, configure your DHCP servers uh, on the access points, if that's what you want. So in any event, guys, uh, that being said, I think it's time to do a little testing because we are connected to the internet. So, let me bring up the iPhone and let's see if we can connect to wireless one and do a quick speed test. And there's wireless one. And yes, it's unsecured. We knew that. Okay. Let's bring up speed test and let's begin test. Okay, so I have 150 meg um, bandwidth coming into the house. This is an ABGN mix wireless network. So we're getting, looks like 64 down and just about 24 up, just a little less than 24. So there you go. All right, guys. So. For whatever it's worth, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun exploring uh, something new that I've not seen before. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, please like, and please share. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching and see you next time.